Hello there, this is Pastor Siva Mudli. And I'm Pastor Jesse Mudli. We're going to learn today about the Laodicean church. You're going to find out why Jesus says to these Christians that he wants to spew them out of his mouth. When Jesus goes to this church, he gets nauseous. You're also going to find out what it means when Jesus says he stands at the door and knocks. Who is he speaking to? Is he speaking to people who are saved or people who are unsaved? So stay tuned to the program as we go now to the book of Revelation and discuss the last of the seven churches. The glory of heaven fills this house now! The glory of heaven! I know there's people watching us from Botswana, from Namibia, from all over the world, Jesse. Amen. So quickly, will you greet everyone? Help me with the names. And uh, we just want to welcome them. Amen. Well, we want to bless uh, each one of you by calling out your names. We have Michelle from Kenya, Dion in Durban, Christina in the UK, Janet in Dubai, Peter in Zimbabwe, Favor in Nigeria, Daryl from Swaziland, Mario uh -huh. in Switzerland, Denison from Tanzania, Claudine in Port Elizabeth, Lee in Midrand, Olga in Limpopo, Priya in Cape Town, Nshlapo from Mpumalanga, Romy in California in the USA, Catherine in Singapore, John in Namibia, Anna from Arizona. Amen. So I'm going to get into the message today because we are talking about the church in... Laodicea. Which is the last church yes, from the, the seven, seven churches, churches right? We dealt with all seven churches. Do you remember the churches, Jesse? I'll well, I do. Spot. Yes, yeah. it's Ephesus, uh -huh. Smyrna, right. Pergamum. Smyrna, is that where the Smurfs live? No, no. Okay, no, no it's okay. Just, just checking. It's where Mo is made. <laughs> and then we have Thyatira. <laughs> right. And then we had Sardis. Right. And then we had Philadelphia. Right. And today we are doing Laodicea. Wow. So Amen. that would be seven out of seven for me. Amen. Amen. Well done. Well done. <laughs> so this is the last one in the churches. Yes. And uh, it's going to be quite exciting. Now, yes. I have a special name for this church, and I know you don't like that name I have. But, uh, but it's fine. You can it's fine. Can I say that name? I call it the Vomit Church. <laughs> right? So, Because <laughs> Jesus says he's going to vomit this church out. Right? <laughs> so, I'm going to call it Disgusting Church. Right? Okay. But anyway, Jesus goes to all the churches, all seven churches. Mm. He writes letters to them. When he comes to this church, he says, hey, guys, you guys make me puke. Mm. I think that's where he left them for the very last, the last of the seven. right? Okay, good. I'm sure that when he was writing the letters to the churches, and he, he was commending all the churches, how well you guys have done and so yes. on. Some of you need to fix some things, but, you know, you, you commend them all. Yes, and so yes. these guys here in uh, Laodicea, yeah. <laughs> they probably said, hey, wow. He's left the best for last. Oh, We're gonna get boy. like the main <laughs> condemnation, you know, combinations, and mm. uh, and they get a shock of their life yes. when he does not do that, but he, instead he rebukes them. Yes, he right? does, and he disciplines. them. He disciplines them. Very, very so there, there's nothing that he speaks good about. He just disciplines them there, mm. and I'm sure it was a shocker for them as well. Let's just quickly pray for this church. If you will just join me, we're gonna pray right now. Because I want you to hear what God is saying to this church. It's so powerful. I'm going to fix some stuff we were taught wrongly. Mm. Or, or rather, we didn't get the full revelation on it. Yes. And uh, I'm going to speak about that today. And we're going to discuss this church in great detail. Amen. Yes, so are. let's pray. Amen. Sit your hand towards the screen. Father, Jesus. thank you for the revelation today that you're going to send to us. Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your power that is here right now. That's in every person's house. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for revelation, for understanding. Thank you that you are the teacher, that you teach us the word of God. And wonderful Holy Spirit, I thank you from all the stuff that we've learned in the series, that, Lord, our lives will never be the same again. We are getting a direct prophecy from Jesus Christ about us, about our ministry, about our walk, about our church. And I thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. So the, the letter to the church starts off with the angel to the church. And again, these letters were written 
to seven pastors, right? We, we've established that. And uh, you can go back in the series. You missed out anything. You can go back to our YouTube channel. These letters were written to seven pastors, but the pastors also had to share it with the congregation. So the yes. congregation knew what was in the letter, but it was addressed to the pastor yes. of each church. Now, when these letters were written, some of the churches did not exist mm, at, the time, at the time. And all of the places where there were churches, there was just one church. Yes. So it was written to the one church in that city, to the pastor in that city. Mm. Amen. And it's because why you say, why did he write to the pastors? Because Jesus honors authority. He puts pastors in place. Yes. So pastors have to report to Jesus. Amen. They serve you, but they report to Jesus. They are accountable to Jesus. And, and, and this is the scary thing of somebody wanting to be a pastor. Mm. You are held fully accountable for all your actions. You are fully accountable for the way you treat people's lives and the way you minister. And, and you you held accountable for all the people that come under your covering, your congregation. You held accountable for them. The Bible says uh, that you need to give an account for them yes. before God. And, and you know, so, so you also need to make sure that you do your work right. Because what if you get to heaven at the Bema and Jesus says, but why didn't you teach them the word properly? Mm -hmm. You know, why didn't you show them the fire of God? Why didn't you teach them how to heal the sick? Why didn't you uh, uh, pray and teach them how to prosper? So God, Jesus is probably going to ask some pastors those yes, questions. So, and being a pastor is not, you'd rather be an evangelist or you'd rather be an apostle or a prophet or something like that than be a pastor because a pastor is held strictly accountable by Jesus. It's the most accountable position in the body of Christ. The pastor's position is the most accountable position. Amen. Right, so so don't worry who's this pastor reporting to that. He's accountable to God. He has yes, to answer man. to Shoot. God for everything that he does. Amen. So Jesse, uh, this letter is written to the angel. Will you read it for us? It's Revelation 3 verses Verse 14. to 22. Amen. Verse Go for 22. it. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, yeah. these things says the amen, the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God. Amen. So Jesus mm. always, when he writes a letter, he shows a part of himself to yes. that church. So to this church, he says his name is Amen. Mm. What does Amen mean? Amen is so let it be. Amen. It's exactly what it's God done, says. Amen. It's, it's settled. Finished. It's yes. settled, right? And it also says that he's faithful. Yes. And, and he's true. a true witness, mm. right? Not a false witness, but a true, true witness. witness. He's authenticating who he is yes. to this church. He says, hey, I'm not just by the way. Mm. I am a true witness, right? And I'm the ruler of all of God's creation. Mm. I rule over all God's creation. Everything. So you want to know who's the guy in charge? I'm the guy in charge. That's what Jesus is saying yes, here, so right? Yes, he says amen to that. Amen to that. <laughs> Carry on. I know your works and that you are neither cold nor hot. Mm -hmm. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, mm -hmm. miserable, mm -hmm. poor, blind, and naked. Mm. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, Amen. and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Mm -hmm. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. Amen. So tell me a little bit about this place. This city, Laodicea, was a very, very rich city. Right. So very it was the, kind of like the Malibu of uh, wow. Asia Minor. Yes. They had the richest of the rich yes, living who lived there. in the city. 
and and the whole city was wealthy. Everywhere is wealthy. Everyone in that city. It, it was wasn't wealthy. on a trade route. We know that. Yes. And uh, the the only one problem they had, even though it was such a posh city, mm. the one problem they had is that the river that serviced the city often ran dry. Yes. So there wasn't enough water, water. for the city. But having a rich city mm. means that you would have had also a lot of shopping malls. A lot of shopping malls. Right? In fact, they had 4,500 shops. Wow. Yes, Say you heard how me many? right. 4,500 4, shops. In the ancient world. <laughs> in a little city, 4,500 shops. With four huge shopping malls. Four huge shopping malls. Two theatres. Right, that's two uh, entertainment centres. Yes, right? and the theatre seated, get the 60,000 people. Wow. So this was 60,000 people. In fact, they had so much of money. Mm. Uh, uh, a few years, uh, uh, in fact, no, no, actually, it was actually before the letter was, was written. There was a earthquake, earthquake that yes. destroyed the city. Yes. And the Romans said, you know, like, you know, do, do you need us to help you yes, provide they assistance? Yes, offered help. And yeah. they offered help. And, and, and these people said, no, we don't need your money. Yeah, we We've got the, enough money, we'll fix it ourselves. We are the rich of the Leo And they just rebuilt right? the whole city. The city. That's how rich they were, mm. right? So they had all the shopping malls, and they also were a center for medicine and research. Yes. And the one area where they were world famous for mm. was in uh, uh, in designing or in in, um, uh, in uh, producing an ointment. Ointment, yes, eye slave. for the eyes. It was actually for the eyes and the ear. Mm. And uh, many years later, they did an investigation and they, and they looked at this thing that they made and they found out it really was very, very effective. It still is effective. Yes, the eyes. And in the ancient world, in this city, the medical school got established, and the and the optometry mm. got established in the city. Yes. Uh, because of this treatment, high treatment mm. that they were very famous for. It is definitely a, a woman's dream to live in Laodicea. Yes. I mean, four thousand five hundred shops, four huge shopping malls. Right. Um, uh, I'm sure the men out there are also saying, you know, we wished, they wished that they lived there too. Right. Because everybody there was absolutely rich. They donned, uh, you know, they adorned themselves with right. rich materials, clothing. Right. Um, so they lived life to the fullest. To the fullest. Mm. I mean, even the Christians in church. Yes. And, and also there was a lot of Jews in the city. Yes. A lot of Jews had moved to the city. And, and the Christians that were there also were extremely wealthy, mm. very, very wealthy. Very, very wealthy. Now, there's nothing wrong in being wealthy. No. You know, it's a blessing from God. But sometimes being wealthy can work against you because being wealthy can turn you against God, can make mm. you pr proud. It can lead to a thing we call spiritual poverty. Yes. And, and that was really the problem that was here. But um, I want to also pick on uh, or go back to two things that people have misinterpreted from this church. One is Jesus says, hey, you guys are neither hot nor cold, yeah. and, uh, but you look warm. And a lot of people have said, well, Jesus is talking there about the church being on fire. The problem with this church is they were not on fire, you know? <laughs> no, it's not talking about being on fire, right? With well, a reference to hot and cold means something completely different, and mm. I'll, I'll share that with you in a minute. The second thing over here is something that every evangelist uses. And Jesus says, behold... I stand at the door and I, I knock. knock. And if you'll open the door, I'll come in. Now, we use that line, and there's nothing wrong in using this line, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong in using it. But we use this line for the unsaved. Yes. For, and we always for, salvation, yes for, exactly. for salvation. And it's wonderful to do that. There's nothing wrong in doing that. However, in context, yes. Jesus is not talking here to the unsaved. Mm, mm. He's actually speaking to the church. He says to the church, I'm standing at your door and I'm knocking. I want to come inside your building. But church, you're not allowing me to enter. <laughs> you're like, you've got the knob. You know, you need to open the door so yes. I can come in. There's but no you, Jesus outside. is saying to this church, to Christians, mm. you have locked me out. 
Yes, because so, he also says, I know your yes, works. Yes. He's saying, you are my people. Right. You have already given your heart to me. You right. are my people. Right. But you don't even know that I'm not inside the church. <laughs> and, and he says, I'm standing outside and I'm knocking, you know. Right. And you can't hear me. Will you please open the door so I can come inside? Amen. 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 Then the other thing that is very important here, uh, because we, we spoke about Jesus saying, hey, you guys, you're neither hot nor cold, no cold. right? And, uh, and I said to you, there was something also the city was famous for. It was the first city in the world mm -hmm. that had running hot and cold water. Yes. They're, they're engineers. They're top engineers yes, in the city. They did. Yes. And the engineers, actually, the names are listed. The engineers designed a, 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 a system, mm. a, a water system, that provided both hot and cold water. Mm. It wasn't as very efficient, but they had physically hot water yes. and they had physically cold water. Now, what happened is that this city was nestled between two tourist attractions, mm. right? There were two tourist attractions here, and this city was in the center of the tourist attractions. So let me quickly get the name of those tourist attractions. Uh, one, one was a holiday resort called Colosse. Colosse. Now, Colosse, you could see it from, from uh, Laodicea. Yes, you could. And it, was, it wasn't very far away. It was like, I don't know, well, 11 miles, 20 miles, something like mm. that, but it was nearby. And this city had mountains that always had snow on it. Yes, beautiful. They had snow mountains. So people went to these ski resorts, or this, you know, I'm using the modern terminology. Yeah. They went to the ski resort. They always drank fresh, healthy mountain water, mm. ice cold mountain water. Very refreshing. Because of the ice, because of the snow, yes. the water was refreshing. And, and many people went to the mountains for healing. Yes. So they were, they were, uh, it was a place for healing. It was a place where you could drink pure, pure water. Because yes. remember, the one problem they always had throughout the ancient world was, uh, um, was that viruses got into the water. Mm. Like we call them a cholera and things like that. Yes. But I'm not sure what terms they gave in the ancient world, but they had these diseases. And even in the Bible, there's an instant where one of the apostles suffered yes. with the uh, water that he drank. Because remember, where did they drink water from? Mm. On the road, there were these ponds and yes. lakes and stuff, <laughs> wells and stuff like that. So there was no purification system. Yes. You know, no one had understood germs and stuff like that by then. Mm. So they had no choice. Yeah. If they want a road and they see water there, mm. they would go jump. Even if the water was polluted, yes. they would go and drink that water. And so very often... Uh, uh, all these germs used to live in the water mm. and it'll come inside them. So many people suffered with these uh, sicknesses yes. from drinking these impure waters. Mm. And one of the apostles, Paul wrote to him and said to him, hey, I understand you have a sickness. You can have a little wine yeah. to kill yes, the, the, bacteria the, the, the bacteria in your body. So have it for medicinal use, right? <laughs> but some very clever people have said, well, you know what? I've got bacteria in my body, so I'm going to have wine all the time, right? <laughs> you know, the people have twisted the scripture. Mm. But go read it in context. Yes. Read it in context. In context, they were allowed to have alcohol for medicine, yes. uh, medicinal use. It's like um, cough mixture. Like cough mixture. Right? But you get all these cough mixtures, and they use alcohol as a base. Mm. So they had a serious problem with water. And the people that suffered with all these illnesses, they would go to this mountain resort, yes. drink the pure water, and drink the mountain water, and they would get healed. Yes. So this was a place of great healing, right? What is the name of the place again? Colosse. Colosse. It, was, uh, 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 it had snow mountains, and it produced ice cold water when the snow melted, mm. and fresh from the mountains, flowing. fresh flowing cold water. So... These engineers, they decided to put in aqueducts, pump, uh, piping yes. from this town, right? And they put in piping and brought the ice cold water to the city. Mm, Leo, see, yes. Then on the other side, on the one side is Colosse, which yes. is a, uh, a ski resort, right? Modern <laughs> terminology, ski resort. On the other side 
is another city. Do you know the name of it, Jesse? That is Hierapolis. Hierapolis. Yeah. And Hierapolis is still there today. Yes. It's still world famous. What is it famous for? Hierapolis has natural geysers. Which hot water. Hot springs, hot right? Hot springs. In natural fact, hot springs. even in the ancient world, it was so popular that Anthony and Cleopatra would often go to that city. Yes, and they would love their hot baths. The hot baths there, mm -hmm. right? So they had natural hot water coming out of the hot springs. Hot springs. But also, also, many, many people went there mm. for healing. Yes. Like in our country, uh, we have a few spots in our country, mm. and uh, 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 we have these areas where they, yes. uh, <laughs> like one of the areas is called warm baths, right? And I'm sure there's many other areas in our country where you have this hot spring water. Yes. And people who have medical conditions go to these places. Yes, they do. Right, for, for healing. So there's healing in these hot baths. Mm. Now, the engineers, again, they decided to put piping yes. from the hot baths believing that they will get hot, hot water. water. So can you imagine this now? And uh, you know, this is the ancient world, right? Mm, ancient look world. Thinking. Look at the thinking, <laughs> look at the money they had, because this is an expensive project that lasted for years. They, you know, it took them years. To build? Because it was yes. kilometers upon kilometers upon kilometers mm. of piping they had to lay, aqueducts they had to build. Yes. And, and they had to connect the pipes together. They had to dry. They had to build the piping. Mm. In, fact, in fact, we are going to the seven churches of Revelation. Yes, We're yeah. doing it next year with Joy Magazine. And I pray that you will come and join us on the tour. But when we get to this church, uh, you're going to see the actual piping that's still there mm. that was built by the engineers in the city. So it took years and years. And the idea was uh, when you got to your kitchen or your bathtub, you could open the hot water or you could open the cold, cold water. water. Isn't that cool, right? <laughs> I mean, they had the money. They wanted to live in style. Yes. Style. But there was a little problem, especially with the, with the water that came from the, the hot, springs. hot springs, right? One is hot springs, the water had a lot of minerals in it. Mm. It had sulfur and minerals. Yes. But the piping also they used had clay on the inside. Yes. So the hot water eroded the piping, mm. the clay mixed with the water, the minerals that were there mixed with the water. So imagine now they had this day, they had this big grand day yes. where the engineer said, we are finished and we're going to, they called the mayor of the town, everyone is there. Yes, they must have. And they said, <laughs> we're going to now open the tap and you're going to have hot water. The first city in the entire world to have hot running water. What an accomplishment. So the engineers got there, they had this big celebration, and they opened the faucet, right? Mm -hmm. When they opened the faucet, the hot water, well, the water came out. Firstly, the water was not hot anymore. No. Because the water has been flowing for several kilometers. Yes. And although they tried to insulate the pipes, you know, uh, having hot water come several kilometers is going to get warm, mm. right? The water was warm, it was lukewarm. Right? But that wasn't even the major problem. Mm -mm. The major problem was that when they took a glass to drink the water, this water had sulfur, Sulfated. minerals, Ooh. or everything in the hot and spring, the right? and the clay residue. <laughs> when they drank it, they felt like vomiting. Yeah, like made puking. Them very nauseous. Yes, it made them nauseous <laughs> and made them want to vomit the water out because it tastes so terrible. It was really terrible. It wasn't hot water, it was lukewarm water. Well, the cold water that came from the, from the, the ice, ice mountains mm. also turned up and that water was also kind of lukewarm yeah. as well. <laughs> so now Jesus says, now the people were quite disappointed, you yes, know. They were, they, were they were really disappointed. Uh, but they had kind of a little bit of hot water and kind of a little bit of cold water, but mm. it wasn't the same as going to those two cities. No, not at all. So Jesus now says, and let, let's read this again. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. Whoa, he says, hold on. So what he's doing now, and it's so amazing, mm. Jesus uses what they're going through to explain their spiritual condition. Exactly. So he says, guys, you're not hot. You're not hot like that city with the springs. Mm -hmm. And you're not cold like that resort with the, the, with the, the snow. With the snow. Down. You're not hot and you're not cold, right? Instead, instead you are lukewarm, right? Mm. 
You're lukewarm. Neither hot, and he explains what it means, neither lukewarm. Exactly. He's saying you're neither hot nor cold. I am about to spew you out of my mouth. You are like this horrible water. Yes. That came from these two places that you can't even drink. You have to spew it out. Mm. It's, it's not drinkable. It's useless water yes. because it's now warm. So we Fantastic. invested all this money. We invested all this time to get the water coming in. Mm. But it's water that cannot be drunk. It's water that is warm. It's water that is of no use. I mean, who wants to have a bath in water that is lukewarm? Yes, quench your thirst with lukewarm warm water. Horrible tasting right. water. Then he says something. He says it's neither hot nor cold. Mm. What did he mean by that? Well, in both those locations, where there was the, the springs, hot springs, and where there was the high school water in the mountains, both those locations had healing. Yes. Healing happened there, both the places. Yes. In both the places, people were nourished. People were revitalized in both those locations. So there was healing, nourishment, enjoyment, uh, pleasure, vitality. You know, it was a place of restoration. And that was also a place of restoration and yes. nourishment. But the lukewarm water was useless water. Because yeah. there was no nourishment, no healing, no, no, no. vitality, no enjoyment. No satisfaction. No satisfaction. Yeah. So Jesus is saying, hey, you guys are like this water that's coming to your city. Mm. This water is useless water. It's neither hot nor cold. It doesn't do anything good. Yeah. It's a water of no value, and it's lukewarm water, useless water. And guys, you are like that. You are useless Christians. Ooh. What a rebuke that Jesus gives to this church. My God, if I was this church, I would have just hit my head. So this is the great rebuke about being lukewarm. Yes. It means that you have no value in the kingdom. You have no value whatsoever in the kingdom. You are in the kingdom, but what good do you do in the kingdom? Because you're not delivering hot water. In other words, you're not healing the people. You're not restoring the people. You're not a healing center. And you're also not cold. You're not a healing center. You're not delivering the people, nourishing them, providing relaxation and, 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 and refreshing, refreshing yes. them. You're not doing any of that. Instead, all. you're just useless, lukewarm water. You don't do any of that. You're neither hot nor cold. What a rebuke to a church. To a church. Now, why would Jesus be so harsh to a church? I mean, why would he be so harsh to this people in, in the city? I mean, what did they do that Jesus now calls them useless? Because being lukewarm means you have no value in the yes. kingdom. And you're in the kingdom, but you have no benefit to the kingdom. That's what it means here. You have no benefit to the kingdom. And of course, these people were probably quite upset. Yes. They were quite shocked at what Jesus had told them because they had read all the other letters. Mm. All the other letters were great letters. And everyone was waiting and to waiting hear about the letters the church. church. And now Jesus says this. He says, firstly, you look warm, you, you useless water. Mm. Then he says this here. He says, I want to vomit you out. In other words, when I come to you, you give me nausea. What a statement from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Wow, now that was some powerful teaching. We learned such powerful truths from the book of Revelation and from the Laodicean church, amen. If you missed any of our programs, go to our YouTube channel and you can catch any episode that you would love to watch. This is Pastor Jesse Moodley. Pastor Silva Moodley. We love you and remember, miracles, miracles are, are normal. normal. God bye bless bye. you. Bye-bye.